Is it possible that your subjective mind has an effect on the objective world? Is it true that mind and matter are so intimately connected that it's impossible to separate the two? If that is true, how can you use this information to not only change your body, but to change your life? What you're about to learn may open the door to show you how your thoughts literally affect matter, that your thoughts matter. Let's begin. Much of what we understood about the physics of the nature of reality before the 1900s was categorized under the concept of Newtonian physics, or what we call classical physics. Now think of classical physics, or Newtonian physics, as the physics of the predictable. And when Newton had his realization when the apple fell from the tree, the realization basically said, things are moving in a smooth and continuous fashion, and when the apple falls from the tree, as long as I know the distance it's falling, I can determine how long it's gonna to take to land. And because of Newtonian physics, we can shoot a rocket to the moon with accuracy. You'll know the exact time it takes for you to travel from Los Angeles to London, we can determine then the trajectory of planets rotating around the sun. And because of Newtonian physics, we have enough understanding to be able to navigate in our three-dimensional world. So think of Newtonian physics as the physics of the predictable or the physics of the very large. Now, at the turn of the 19th century, Albert Einstein and Max Planck began to study the subatomic world. And what they were interested in doing was, just like an apple falling from the tree, they wanted to begin to disturb the electrons that were existing around the nucleus of the atom. And all of us have seen that classical model of the atom, where you have the atom being like the sun, and you have all these electrons rotating around it. And that was the model that was existing up until that point. When they began to disturb that electron and add energy to it, they expected that the electron would move towards the center of gravity, towards the nucleus of the atom, just like an apple falling from the tree, that it would fall in a very smooth and continuous fashion, very predictable way. But what they discovered is that the subatomic world of those electrons behaved very differently than the very large world of apples falling from trees the electron would gain energy and lose energy. Then it would gain energy and lose energy. And instead of it falling from the tree in a smooth, continuous way, like rolling down a hill, it was more like a ball dropping down stairs, gaining energy, losing energy, gaining energy, losing energy. And they realized that the subatomic world no longer behaved like the large world. So then they began to try to measure the electron and what they discovered was that that model of classical physics, where it said the nucleus of the atom was like the sun and the planets rotating around it, isn't actually the truth. The way it really is, is that there's a nucleus and then there's a cloud of energy called the wave. And in that cloud of energy, the electron could exist anywhere. Now, let me give you an example. If you blew up the nucleus of the atom to the size of a Volkswagen bug, the electron would be the size of a pea. Now, where that electron could exist would be the size of the state of Utah, or twice the size the country of Cuba. Now, there's a lot of possibility of where that electron could be. When the field of probability is existing, the electron exists as possibility or potential. So when they began to measure the electron, they began to look for it, all of a sudden that energy collapsed into a particle called collapsing the wave function or a quantum event. Subjective mind for the first time had an effect on the objective world and the observer effect was born. Now here's the cool part. The moment they took their attention off the electron and they no longer put their awareness on it, that electron, that particle, turned back into energy and turned back into possibility. Now you may say, well, yes, that observer effect, mind and matter, are intimately related on a subatomic level, but does it really affect 
are life in large-scale events. Does the observer effect only work for the tiny and not for the large? Well, maybe we're just poor observers, and maybe we can learn how to sharpen our skill of observation.